And we welcome you back to the beautiful beach, the NCAA Beach Volleyball Championships for the first time in this tournament's history. 16 teams descended upon the beach here, and Georgia State took advantage of that. The number 10 seed, our first Cinderella, so to speak. They have knocked out higher seeded teams, including a win over TCU yesterday, which was the biggest win in tournament history. So they will be in action later today. UCLA still going strong, and we are about uh, a little more than 80 seconds away from first serve, and we're going to go down to the third member of our team this morning, Christine Williamson, for more on what Brooke Niles is juggling. Yeah, build as an individual, grow as a team. That's the motto for FSU this beach volleyball season. But it doesn't just apply to the players because head coach Brooke Niles has decided to go back to school. She's getting her master's in coaching, which I would argue she's already mastered. She had a 15-page paper due before she got down to Gulf Shores, and she got an A. But, I mean, guys, I'm, we could have told her that she was going to get an A in coaching. I mean, come on. If you're a coach and you don't get an A and – Coaching? <laughs> Just kidding, Brooke. I know it's tough. Here's a look at our lineup. Five courts will be in action if you're new to the sport. Whoever wins three of these courts first moves on in the winner's bracket. Now they are playing two out of three set matches at each court. The first two sets go to 21 win by two. And if we get to a third set, it goes to 15. This is one of the best, if not the best pairs in the country, Nicole. Gradina and Harward. Tina Gradina was an Olympian for Latvia. She finished fourth in the Tokyo Games, has come back to college to play for Dane Blanton. She's teaming with a player that I feel like, if your life's on the line, you want her playing for it. Haley Harward is a dynamic partner, and they will be playing against Anderson and Bauer, who are also first team All-Americans. It's Florida State on the left, USC on the right. You know, as, as an Olympian, Nicole, I would love your thoughts on this Gradina Harward pair. They are very talented, as you said, so athletic and dynamic. Gardena is a force at the net, and Harward behind her, she is flying all over the sand. And when she gets up, keep an eye on that vertical today as you watch her play. She flies out of the sand and just crushes the ball. Harward gets credit for the ace there with a little help from the net. Harward. A grad student from Phoenix. She was actually Dane Blanton's first recruit, and uh, no surprise there. She has a lot of the same personality characteristics as the gold medal winning head coach. And there's the first point for Florida State. That is hammered to the sand by number 32, Brooke Bauer, a senior from Fort Lauderdale, but spent most of her collegiate career out at Pepperdine, has come home for this final year. Maddie Anderson, her partner from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, with the serve. Into the open court, successfully done by Gardena. And Florida State is gonna have, who are you gonna serve? Both of them, <laughs> Harward and Gardena, side out at such a high level, high percentage that you really gotta serve tough from that line and keep them guessing. That's right, these two have played each other twice already this year. USC has not dropped a set against Anderson and Bauer. And it gives you an idea just how strong they are because these are two of the best ones in the country. Watch Gardena here getting up, just pressing over, and that ball flying to the back end line. No one can cover that one. This Florida State pair at the ones has not figured out how to win a set yet against Gardena and Harvard in the two previous duels this year. Bauer. Has uh, come back home to Florida to get her MBA. Pushes that serve just out. I like the aggressive top spin, just missed it long, but going for that middle is a great idea against SC. Make them have to communicate over who's going to take it. And this is another thing in beach volleyball. They change sides after every seven points in the first two sets. If we get to that final set, that switch would take place every five points. And it's Gardena and Harvard for USC. With the advantage after the first seven points, five to two. Action taking place now on all five courts. Whoever wins three of the courts first wins the duel. Nice shot, high hands. Great vision there by Bauer coming in, getting a call from her partner, Gardena, making a little step into that angle. Felt that and went over the high line. She's been uh, helped a lot by uh, Nick Lucina, who is Brooke Niles' husband and a former Olympian. He's part of the coaching staff now at Florida State. And that, that's one of the things I love about this sport, Nicole, 
it's a treasure chest of Olympic medals among the coaches. I mean, you're seeing just Hall of Fame caliber players come back to the sport and coach these student athletes. And that's how much they love it. Putting in the time and giving back to these athletes with their knowledge and experience is invaluable and just something that they're so fortunate to have to share that with these players. Gradina crushes it into the sand. And USC has come out swinging here. This pair yesterday struggled against Ford Atlantic in the first set. Beautiful touch, getting that ball up for Harvard to cover, lift it up, and Gardena has such a beautiful step close to crush that ball down. Well, it is just past 6 a.m. out in Los Angeles right now. Raz and shine. Yeah, so uh, we welcome all of you that have gotten up to watch the Trojans, but that's a, another element that USC dealing with playing here in Central Time. Florida State very comfortable in these conditions in the heat and humidity. And another good shot. USC has just been unstoppable so far. Harward that time. And she has really expanded her game. I remember Coach Dane Blanton saying, we had to teach her that you don't have to hit every ball straight down. No matter how it hits the sand, it's still a point. So really expanding her toolbox of offense with shots, moving the ball around the court. Well, Gradina is the Olympian, but Dane Blanton says that Harward is probably the best athlete in the country. Now that is saying something from a gold medal winning beach volleyball player to give her that honor. And you'll see why today watching her out here on this court one. Uh, Special talent. Volunteer assistant Lauren Weaver walking with them. That's again another trait of beach volleyball. The coaches can walk and talk to the players when they change sides and get that coaching. Some pairs don't need a coach out on the court. And usually this pair doesn't have a, a coach. Yesterday, FAU pushing them if we would have continued going into a third set. So maybe just a little extra support today to have some of those reminders. That shot was just wide point for Florida State. Maddie Anderson and Brooke Bauer, they've had 16 wins against top 20 teams. Nine of those were against top 10 pairs, including, or not including this one though. This is the one pair for USC that Florida State hasn't been able to beat. But they're tightening it up here at the ones and we'll move over to the twos now. Chacon and Fitzpatrick are on the right side of your screen. Kraft and Slater on the left. And again, this is a, just a who's who of beach volleyball. You're gonna see some of the best players in the country in this duel. The interesting thing about the pair on the left, Kraft and Slater, is one of Nicole's nuggets today. Give it to us, Nicole. Nuggets from Nicole. Megan Kraft actually has zero errors on the tournament. And that is unbelievable considering the conditions yesterday with the wind coming in, keeping that ball in play. But I mean, how many unbelievable swings and other touches that she get, just no errors. So that is just a testament to the high level of this USC team and player. She's another one to keep an eye on. I think she'll be a great international player mm -hmm. heading to the Olympics one day, in my opinion. That is Dane Blanton, the head coach who picked up his 70th career win as a head coach yesterday against Florida Atlantic. Uh, took this team to the national title last year in his first season as head coach. Dane, uh, NCAA champion himself, an Olympic gold medalist, and now an NCAA champion as a coach. Chacon, number 15 for Florida State, with her back to you. Her partner, Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick, number 33. And number 22 is Megan Kraft. Sammy Slater, number four. Slater, the team captain for USC. But they have just been so tight here in this championship. You saw only the second hitting error from the pair a few moments ago. That is just out, point USC, and so the Trojans tie it here at the twos at eight. And that is what we call a jumbo, so good idea to try to get that ball over the defender, but just too long. Dane Blanton thinks Kraft will eventually be an Olympian, and he thinks she's actually gonna end up being the best player in college volleyball at some point. <laughs> Slater attacking, nice block by Fitzpatrick, and the Seminoles side out. Great press over the net, that left hand really pressing over to cut off that angle of Sammy Slater. 
comes in hard and just presses over that hand. Couldn't quite cover that ball to keep it in play. Chacon back to serve as she's one of three sets of sisters on this Florida State team. You see her sister in the lineup later today, Morgan. And an ace for Chacon. And there's the tough serving that Coach Brooke Niles mentioned they need to bring today. This team a little bit undersized, split blocking, so serving tough and setting that situation up to make a dig and transition is key. Chacon 5'11", but she has the highest vertical on the team. Her partner Fitzpatrick 5'9". And the Seminoles on a little run here, Nicole. They've opened up the lead against the Trojans 11 to 8 here at the twos. This team is very fun to watch throughout this week. They have great energy, chemistry together, and look at their faces. They just, I know they're in the lead, but even when they're down, you can tell that they enjoy playing with each other and support each other on the court. Another huge ace by Chacon, and she is just rattling him off. It's not that windy today, but she is really getting a great high hand on that ball into the wind. A little wind that there is, and putting a nice, nice heat on it. Chacon on fire behind the service line. USC needs a side out, and they get it. So USC, as they change sides, has cut the deficit to three. They'll go into the sit down. Five courts in action, still early in the opening set. But look at the threes. USC with a big lead there. So here's what's happening right now across all five courts. You have to win three of these courts in these two out of three set matches to move on into the winner's bracket. The loser of this duel is still alive. They will play in an elimination match later on. And right now it is USC at the threes leading big time. 17 to four, Nicole. Skulls and Maple have gotten off to an incredible start. They sure have, and that is quite a lead. Hard to come back from that situation. And a tip by Maple. And they just keep pouring it on. And Maple from San Diego with Julia Scholes, the grad student. Maple last year on the Pac-12's all-freshman team. She just keeps getting better and better. There's the pro aspirations as well at some point. And they are firing today. Maple, another smart shot right into the open court. Nice set by Skulls. They're a little tight up there at the net, but no problem for Maple to handle get up high over that block. Really pushing that ball up for her partner to keep the Florida State blocker at the net and open up that short over to the sideline. First time these pairs have ever faced each other. And USC very much getting the best of this first set so far. And when you're down this big of a deficit. What's your mindset? Honestly, I hate to say that the game, move on to the next game, because you want to take one point at a time, but try to get some momentum in this game to bring on into that second set. Think about what adjustments you can make when you go to that timeout. Get your serve going. I mean, at this point, you have nothing to lose to try to rip it from the end line, try to gain some speed for your side going into set number two. It is set point USC here. USC serving right now. This is Skulls. Skulls that transferred into this program and has made an immediate impact. And that's a, a feel good point there for Florida State, but a multitude of set points remain for USC. And this is kind of a new pairing for FSU, relatively new team they put together. Yeah, yeah they've moved up to the threes. Privet is a 371 GPA in exercise physiology. She just served. Set point USC. And the Trojans close it out in dominating fashion, 21 to 6. The good news for Florida State, it's a two out of three set match. So we'll see if the Seminoles can recover. And we go back to the ones where Gradina and Harvard have continued to lead Anderson and Bauer and two of the top ones in the country. Both these pairs, first team All-Americans. So remember, we're trying to win three of the five matches each team is to move on in the winner's bracket. USC is the defending national champion. Good save. 
Nice play by Bauer. Rodina, the Olympian, scores for the Trojans, 19-12. And unfortunately for Florida State, if you give USC another chance to transition, they are going to score. But Florida State loved the way they started off with that short kind of dying wide serve to the sideline. And they had that chance. Those are the points they need to capitalize on and score to stay in this game. Harvard putting that serve right in the middle of the court. Always tough for the receiving team. And it is Gradina again. I think she's hit every kind of shot possible in this first set. She has it all, moving the defense, and she moves the ball so well around the court and just puts such pressure up at the net, trying to get it by her. So set point for USC here at the ones. We saw the threes win the first set a moment ago. And Gradina stuffing it to take the set. That is a good way to end it with an exclamation point. Sorry, that on two is not going to work over here. So USC now with the opening set at the ones and the threes. These are two out of three set matches. You have to win three of them to move on. We'll go to the fours now where we continue our sister theme. Uh, we saw one of the Chacon sisters, uh, Alana, earlier. Morgan is number 23 for Florida State. She's the player uh, coming back onto the court. And we're seeing the Norse twins who are uh, fast becoming a fan favorite at these championships. The Norse twins for USC were here last year playing. Audrey, the righty, Nicole, the lefty. Polo. It's Norse is at the net. Nicole, so Audrey is at the net. Nicole is at back. And then a point for Chacon. Smart play to attack the dropper there as the blocker pulls off the net. Good strategy to either tag the middle or hit that pulling blocker and trying to make a more difficult dig. Chacon last year did not play beach. Uh, she focused on indoor. Playing for uh, Chris Poole's indoor Seminoles. That is going out and Florida State is tightening up this opening set. They trail now by just three. Morgan will be moving from Florida State. She's actually going to go out to Long Beach State and will play indoor at Long Beach State after this season of beach from Florida State. One coast to another. Yeah, a nice swing, but it's blocked. Nicole Norris, the lefty, just could not get it around Chacon. And that was a great angle block. On Nicole there, pressing over with the right hand, cutting off the angle, which lefties love to do that little cut shot and usually have great success. Again, we're going to 21, win by two to win this set. It's a two out of three set match. And the Seminoles are on a roll here. The Norse twins have let their lead be reduced to just one. And they've been playing very well lately. They don't make a lot of errors. The last couple points, few unforced errors, but they started at the fives this year, had a little bit of a lull and moved up to the fours, and they really have been crushing it. So they are not gonna give this one up easy. Andrea and Nicole uh, received the ABCA Top Flight Award. That awards the teams per court, and there's that's gonna feel a lot better as Nicole crushes that. Staying aggressive, coming in, no matter, even though she blocked her angle last time, just coming in and tagging that angle. No fear. It'll be Nicole Norse serving. Getting the signal from her sister up there at the net. Let's the server know where to serve and where the net player is gonna go. Chacon not fooled, perfectly placed. Nice swing, again, tagging the pulling blocker, her partner yelling, nobody. Taking advantage of this great, beautiful set in transition and a nice deep hit over Audrey's head. Polo puts the serve in play. 19-18, and that'll bring up set point for USC. Nice approach from Nicole Norris there. Really started off with a sweet first pass. Getting a great set. Great ball control from this pair from USC. USC trying to win its third opening court set. Go, 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 go. And they 
can't do it yet as Chacon and Polo tighten the rein a little bit. And it is still the North sisters with set point. Chacon and Polo have been playing from behind this entire set and they get to right here and haven't been able to get over the hump, so to speak. And if they lose this point, USC has another opening set win. Hammered into the sand. With a little stare down there, tagging that angle line. And she's had success with that the last few points, so why not keep doing it? So USC now has won the opening set on three courts. Here at the twos, though, Chacon and Fitzpatrick have turned this around and are leading now with a set point. This is the other Chacon. So we go from sister to sister. At the twos, we just saw Morgan. This is Alana. That goes out but still set point for Florida State. She was going for it. She was, I like it. And she's known to go on quite a run, take over matches with that jump serve that we saw earlier on this court. Sammy Slater looking at what's in front of her. Must win point for the Trojans. USC hasn't lost a set yet. Slater crushes it. And USC still alive. One more set point for Florida State. And it is not easy to be scoring after you're serving when the, the other team needs just one side out, but keeping that pressure on them. Slater getting her master's in entrepreneurship and innovation. She's a leader, the team captain. It's set point here for Florida State, and they get it. The Seminoles take their first set of the duel, and it comes at the twos. Chacon and Fitzpatrick. They are fired up. Over to the fives, we are tied. No, now we're not. It is set point for the state. Moon and White. This is Raylan White, number 13 in gold at the bottom of your screen. Eberton and Viapondo for USC on the other side. Florida State looking for another opening set. That goes out. And Florida State in a matter of seconds has taken opening sets at the twos and the fives. So things are tightening up. The defending national champions getting pushed by the Seminoles. Another beautiful morning on the beach and at the ones, the intensity is picking up. We saw Gradina and Harward really just cruise through that opening set, Nicole. But here in set number two, Anderson and Bauer have figured things out. They have Florida State making some adjustments and that is the key for a strong, mentally tough team, too. After they lost 21 to 12, going into that little break, you see Coach Brooke Niles there, so helping them today and making some adjustments, coming back out, wiping that game off. It's like, all right, let's start over. It's a new game. Try to get this one to three, one point at a time. Brooke Niles in her seventh season took this team to the national championship duel in 2018. They've won six straight conference titles. This year they came through the loser's bracket to do it. Taking out TCU, nice cut shot. That is uh, perfect by Gradina. That was beautiful. Comes in so hard. Great hand on that ball and just cuts it so sharp. Another interesting thing about the Trojans, they've been in finals this week, Nicole. In fact, they had to bring a proctor on the road with them to take exams. So uh, yeah! players have been taking exams just about every day for the Trojans as well as trying to win another national championship. Not easy to do when you're already here trying, like, like you said, win a championship. There's enough pressure in that and then having to take a final and studying. Harvard with the serve. Wind starting to pick up a little more now. Harvard will set Gradina. And Gradina. Kind of thought Harvard was going to go yeah. on two on that one and crush it. Point to Florida State. Brooke Niles, in fact, was hoping it would be very windy. They 
They handled the win extremely well yesterday. And we came on the air after the storms. Oh, what a shot! And there you go, coming in for that dig. Probably didn't quite plan that, but smart. USC caught at the net. Diving dig. One arm dig just going over a fourth kill. Add that to the stats. Brooke Bauer. You see just some of the most athletic, dynamic shots in this sport. So tough, grinding through the sand and having to know exactly which shot to play. There's another good one as well at the net by Anderson. And here's what I see right now. Florida State is serving tough. They are mixing it up, going deep, going short on that one, setting up the dig for transition, going in hard for that little chip over the block. And this USC pair, Gardena of Har Harvard, They've only lost five sets this season. So if Florida State gets this one, that would be huge momentum for them going into the third set. Gina and Harvard did drop a set yesterday against Ford Atlantic, but the, the match didn't have to finish. Again, once a team wins three of these courts, it's over. The duel is over. So the 21 win by two in the first two sets if we get to a third set, which is what Florida State's trying to do here. That third set would be to 15 win by two. Tina Gardina, the Olympian from Latvia, she and her partner finished fourth in the Tokyo Olympics. The only NCAA player in history to compete in an Olympic Games and then play college volleyball afterward. But playing for Dane Blanton, the gold medal winning head coach and the facilities and opportunities they have at USC. She felt like it was worth coming back to college to continue her training. And so she could have turned pro, obviously had a lot of options, but coming back to USC was a choice for her. Why do you think she made that choice, Nicole? I mean, number one, you have Dane Blanton, gold medal winning coach. He's been there. He's been through the experience of the international tour. As you mentioned, played in college as well, indoor, and brings such a wealth of knowledge to these student athletes. He said he wants to do everything to make these players better, pushing them, hitting every skill, every drill. They have so many resources, so why not come back? You have sports psychology, nutritionists, great strength and conditioning coaches, top of the line coaching from top to bottom. I mean, yes, please. What a great way to even improve your game going back with your partner. I know Gardena played in Rosarita, Rosarito, Texas, um, Mexico, excuse me, not long ago, finishing with a silver medal there with her partner and working that schedule in. Dane is very supportive of that as well. Over at the fours now, we saw the North sisters win that opening set, a tight one, 21-19, and it started out the same way here in the second set. They are tied at seven after that changeover. Again, this is court four. Audrey Norse, the righty, Nicole Norse, the lefty. It's a lot of good rallies in this. Uh, perfectly placed by Jordan Polo. And she is an experienced player as well. Coming in from Cal Berkeley where she played. Yeah, she was a Pac-12 freshman of the year at Cal. She's already gotten her degree from Florida State. In fact, she got her degree in three seasons. Her economics degree and now getting her MBA and is thinking about getting another master's. That seems to be a theme amongst all these teams that we've been talking to going yeah. for. One, two, Masters, very impressive. Florida State again, too strong in that rally. Chacon keeps the Seminoles in front. It's a two-point advantage. They've won the last two points. Great scrappy play by both sides, but that little left pokey over, too much to handle for USC on that one. Timeout, USC. And so Florida State up nine to seven in the second set, a must win set for the Seminoles. Audrey and Nicole Norse take a seat. Coach Gustavo Roca there sitting with them. 
Over to the two, Chacon Fitzpatrick, Kraft and Slater. Let's check in with Christine. Yeah, I've been taking tally of what USC and FSU is doing on the twos, and it's really just been FSU staying patient and letting USC make the mistakes and then putting the ball away when they can. The Trojans have been on fire offensively, but it hasn't been enough. Um, FSU has really been testing them behind the line, and Dane Blanton noted that they had opportunities but haven't capitalized. But towards the end of the first set, it did seem like USC was starting to find more of a rhythm, getting in system, and they feel like they're still in this one and Florida State doing exactly what coach Niles mentioned to me yesterday when talking to her is they need to play pretty perfect volleyball serve tough and it sounds like they're doing that from pair one to five since they're sitting down at the twos let's peek in at the threes this has just been skulls and maples day they have dominated here at the threes long and privet have not found a way to make an impression though they do get the point there and this FSU team this week is the one that we had our eye on. Long playing so well, had some tight matches, really pulling them out in those clutch situations. But today, just SC bringing their A game. Julia Skulls, number 25, she just received that serve. Dane Blanton says she hits it harder than anybody on the pro tour, much less here at the NCAA level. And there was an example of that. So USC two points from getting its first point of this duel. Each team is trying to win three of the five courts. Each court is playing a two out of three set match. The first two sets are to 21 win by two. If a court goes to a third set, that one would be to 15 win by two. USC has been dominant in their opening two duels. Florida State barely got by Cal Poly on the opening round and then responded yesterday taking out the number four seed LMU Lions. And that is a great shot going off the high hands of Allie Long coming in middle and she just turned that ball off the high hands going out of bounds. So match point at the threes and over at the ones on the right side of your screen Gradine and Harvard in danger of losing the set to Anderson and Bauer. Florida State stays alive at the threes on the left side, but it's still match point USC. Well, this number one court is quite interesting. I'll say quite a flip from set number one. The one's on the right side of your screen, but turn your attention now to the threes because it remains match point USC. And with that, USC has its first point on the board. The threes. Delaney Maple, Julia Skulls dominating, and USC takes a 1-0 lead in the duel. Set point four to state here at the ones. Rodina saves a set point, but there is a multitude in front of the Trojans. They have quite a few points here to make up. Florida State has nine chances here to get one side out, which sometimes you've seen it before. But they're siding out well as we've seen this set. Set point for the state. Florida State takes the set and we will have a three set match at the ones. They will go to 15 win by two to determine who gets the point from this court. Well, a reminder, this is the WNBA's 26th season coming up later on ESPN in the app. Reigning MVP, John Kel Jones, leads the sun against Sabrina Agnescu and the Liberty coverage starts at six Eastern, three Pacific. Here's where we stand right now in our opening duel. This is a winner's bracket duel. The twos are the teams that you're watching playing right now. And then the five courts in action are also scattered about your screen. Whoever wins three of these matches first moves on into the winner's bracket. USC has already taken the match at the three, so they only need to win two more of these courts. Florida State has to win three. And Skulls and Maple at that three pair have really been dominating this tournament. They've actually finished first every duel this tournament, every single one of the victory. Here it's another case where Florida State is trying to stay with the defending national champions and get a point. USC 
has not lost a set in a completed match so far. And obviously that streak is in jeopardy with Gardena and Harvard having just dropped that second set. But we'll see if they're able to finish their match. Into the net. Doesn't think she touched it, but aggressive at the net. Sometimes when your partner gets the net, but they're being aggressive, it's like, okay, you know what? That's the risk you take sometimes getting up there and pressing over. So back over to the yeah. fours now. As Chacon and Polo are trying to force a third set here. The, the North sisters not happy about that call. Looks like the ref saying the ball hadn't hit the sand yet and she touched the net. So even if you're getting the point like FSU, there's no way they were going to get that up. But the ball was still in the air. Can't touch the net. Audrey on the left, Nicole on the right. Line, 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 line. Over the block. And it is good. Right off the line. Take a look at this play. The net call. Coming down on the approach. So when she took off, kind of broad jumping there into the net. That was Nicole into the net. She's serving right now. The, the lefty of the sisters just pushes that wide. And let's send it down once again to Christine Williamson. Yeah, FSU has been absolutely bouncing balls with swings and also defensively going up and just blocking some crucial hits. It's also super hype over here. There are a number of FSU fans cheering on the Seminoles. So it feels like they have the momentum, but during the last break, the Norse twins did look, at, did look at each other and say, hey, let's just have a good time. So hopefully they're able to get back in this one. Florida State has never failed to make this championship, Nicole, and they travel well. Their fans come from Tallahassee. It's not a difficult trip to get here to Gulf Shores from there. LSU and Florida State have a ton of fans here every year. I have noticed that, that's for sure. Their team flags, their chants running all around. Definitely oh. brings that home court feel advantage to, to, to FSU today. Beautiful block here by Nicole Norse. Blocking very well this year, pressing over the net. Technique is what Dane Blanton says is this four-team strength, the North Sisters. Newport Beach, California. That goes out. And USC closing the gap to three now. Nicole and Audrey Norse won the opening set in a tight one. And there's a look at Dane Blanton. He's on this court now, coaching the sisters. said they have really gotten into their groove playing the best volleyball they have all season. Oh, nice up. Nice dig, great pull off the net. Getting that ball up. Nice set from her partner in transition. And when you pull off the net, take a look here. The ball has to be hard driven to take it like that. Otherwise it has to be pretty perfect and I recommend not even taking it overhand if it's roll shot. But SC, all the blockers, I think, have, are an excellent job at pulling off the net and making those digs. So they will go into a sit down now. Florida State has let this lead get reduced to two. And we'll come back to that court in a moment, but we want to go to the twos, where Chacon and Fitzpatrick continue to lead Kraft and Slater. This is very interesting as Kraft and Slater have been playing so well this year. I mean, set one, very close. Florida State again with the lead. These two pairs faced each other earlier this year. Kraft and Slater didn't drop a set. And that obviously has changed today. Not much wind to deal with here in the early morning hours. And that's a pretty shot by Slater. Nice over the line. Florida State just out of reach. But Florida State, as you can see, they are touching so many balls. If they might not get it up, the next one they are, they're running everywhere, really reading SC well. Hopefully SC can get some tough serves here to set them up for transition play. Kraft with the serve, trying to tie the score here in the second. It's Patrick, good dig by Slater, she'll get it back. Crush from Megan Kraft. And if you give her another chance to put the ball away, she will. Beautiful set from Sammy Slater. Comes in angle and 
Wow. No one is digging that ball up, not even on the AVP. Kraft was the player coming in that did not have a hitting error in the tournament. She's been technically perfect. Oh, and there's a nice side out by the Seminoles, Chacon. Sneaky on two right under Kraft's elbows there. Starting to see that vertical. She has the highest on the team, just 5'11". Brooke Niles says she has no holes in her game. Seminoles up by a point. Trying to get Florida State a point from this court. It's not going to come easy and as I, Kraft. I would probably keep the ball off her right now, but you know, this again, this pair from SC, both side out well. Sammy Slater's got a nasty wrist, and by that, it's a positive thing. A wicked wrist, rather, I'll say. She can <laughs> cut that ball anywhere, and Megan Kraft just has such a heavy arm coming in as we've seen the last two hits with huge crushes for Florida USC. State, excuse me. Florida State has yet to win a point. They dropped a match at the threes. Gradina and Harvard are in a third set against Anderson and Bauer. Gradina and Harvard have not lost a three-setter all year. And Florida State just keeps pouring it on here. They're winning the big points on this court, Nicole. They are. They really are. That last game, they lost a few of those. But this one, when they're getting the chance, they're taking care of business. Madison Fitzpatrick, the redshirt senior from Tallahassee, Florida, getting to go to college and play for her hometown team. Oh, uh, how about that? The no look. Now that is a smart play from Chacon, feeling the block at the net. I don't know if she saw Slater in her peripheral there on the other side, but getting rid of it, nice lift, smart on two. When you Every keep that option going, it really opens up the offense for your hitter as well. Everybody waiting for the set there, and she put it over. Fitzpatrick let that serve get away from her. We uh, may see Fitzpatrick in our coverage one day. She is aspiring to be a television journalist. Actually, has been doing some internships with the ACC Network. I will say it's very fun. Adrenaline rush is real, even when you're coming on TV. What a swing by Chacon. She couldn't have walked it over there any better. Just inside the line, and Florida State getting closer to securing that first point. Point USC. Slater with the kill, and now we'll go back to serve. They are within one. USC trying to force a third set here. Florida State trying to get the sweep. Sammy Slater is just a natural volleyball player. So easy to coach. Talented player. A point to Florida State. Fitzpatrick goes back. They are three points from victory. Fitzpatrick is the CCSA Scholar Athlete of the Year. That is the conference that Florida State plays in in beach volleyball. LSU and TCU also in that conference. That goes over Chacon's hand. She did not touch it. And the point goes to the Seminoles. USC having a hard time when Florida State staying up at the net. So I think for these last few points, before we saw Florida State pulling off SC scoring, Stay at the net, put a block up against those SC, and they're getting some unforced errors in their favor. It's Patrick, an alternate last year, making the most of her opportunity in the lineup this year. Slater blocked. Here's Chacon. Put up by Slater, she'll get it back. And Slater with too much power. Puts it down, Florida State pulls off the net and Sammy says, not today. You pull on me, I'm gonna score. Nice diving dig, lifts it up for her partner to come in with two down, middle crush. USC still in this set. Florida State though, two points from taking the match. Yeah. 
They're calling for a double contact. Didn't get the call. Rally continues. Slater, the lefty. Fitzpatrick over the block and into the open court. It is match point, Florida State at the twos. You have to win three matches across the five that are playing to win the duel. And this would give Florida State their first match win in this duel. Bringing in the fours, match point USC. So look at the fours now. The Norse sisters with match point. And they get it. So USC has just taken a 2-0 lead in the duel. Oh, excuse me, no, it's not match point. 20 all now, win by two. They have bounced back after yeah. being down a few there on the fours pair. Norris twins, Audrey and Nicole making good adjustments. And we can't confirm now that's a match point that goes Florida State's way at the twos as Florida State now has evened the duel. It is set point for Florida State here to try to force a third set. Also bringing in the fives. It's 20 all there. Moon and White, two points from victory. Eberton and Villapondo trying to force a third. Tied at the fours. Huge, huge swing by Audrey Norris. They're coming in angle. Both of them have great angle hits, and they're having such great success against Florida State. Maybe make an adjustment on the block, take away their angle, play for that high line or line hit. Tied at both courts right now. Look to the right side at the fives. Moon and White won the first set. And it will be point USC. They'll have a set point at the fives and then over at the fours. Nicole and Audrey Norse score and have a match point. A match point on the left. Not yet. That attack wide by Florida State. So USC has forced a third set at the fives and over at the fours it's win by two to determine who either wins this set or this match. If the Norse sisters win it, USC gets a point. If Florida State takes it, they're headed to a third. Match point over the ones, Gradina and Harvard trying to keep that perfect streak alive. Not losing a three setter this year. Look to the right side of your screen. Match point for the team on the right, USC. A oh, nice shot by Bauer to stay alive. Smart decision. Partners dig a little bit, push, gets rid of it. Match point USC at the fours. And USC has just taken a 2-1 lead in the duel, and this could be over in a matter of seconds if USC wins here at the ones. Remember, each team's trying to win three courts. The North Sisters gave them their second point. The ones could give them their third. But two match points saved by Florida State. More, though, coming for USC. Florida State pulling up some scrappy digs there. Smart decision making. Getting those two points in a row. SC has a few opportunities here for one side out, which we know this team is siding out at a high percentage this year. So talented. Brooke Bauer serving. If Florida State drops this duel, they're still alive. This is a winner's bracket duel, so they would play later this afternoon in an elimination match. Gradina trying to end it. And does. Tina Gradina, the Olympian from Latvia, wins the duel for USC. Once again, starting this day off with some very exciting edge of your seat volleyball. Florida State came out strong from the service line, really pushed this USC team, I think, harder than they have been this whole tournament. But USC handling the pressure well, making those adjustments, coming back, and beating Florida State 3 1. So USC uh, finally drops a match in this championship. But they are firmly the team to beat, one of the most elite teams this sport has seen. There's the Olympian Tina Gradina, 
who partners with Haley Harward, who's an aspiring Olympian. And now you're seeing why she came back to college. She I, think, I hear the band. It's like they have a band out here, possibly. She Dancing around. Absolutely loves this environment. You don't get this when you're playing international beach volleyball, and it's just you and your partner. No, this is a very special, special feeling to have. The student athletes, just an amazing experience. Dane Blanton, head coach, in that huddle, talking to his team. We hope to speak to him in just a moment. But this is the first year this championship has gone to 16 seeds. USC, the defending national champion, still the front runner. And I'm sure Dane has some words of wisdom here. At He's two and four, and then only one, three, and five. So the tournament just switched. You managed to a certain level where it switched. Great job, you guys. Let's get some rest. Let's hydrate. Let's see Lauren. Let's do our thing. The Norse Smiles from USC. Dane Bland picking up his 71st career win as a head coach and keeps his team in the winner's bracket. They will play at 4 Eastern today on ESPN2 against the winner of our upcoming duel. Could be a USC UCLA rematch. That's one of the great rivalries in all of sports, but especially when you put a volleyball in the air. Christine Williamson now is caught up with Dane Bland. Yeah, Coach, congratulations. Uh, I saw you huddle up with your girls after that one. What was the message to them? Well, in this type of a format, it's very difficult because there's a big board with all these scores on. So we really focus on getting the players to put their head down, focus on their court, right? You start doing the math, adding what's going on up there. You kind of get in the mix. Even myself, I went over to the fives to coach after who I had switched from the twos and we had lost and I was ready to go in that third set and then one of my assistants came up and said it's over. So I mean we're engaged until we hear that horn and that's the way you have to play. You got to play with urgency, you got to play with intensity and we were able to do that. And most of all I was impressed with how we played as a team. Uh, you said that you were over with the twos, Sammy and Megan, and obviously, like you said, they did lose that set or that match. Uh, what exactly do they need to work on as you go into the next in the next duel? Well, their urgency needed to be stepped up. They were finishing half the play, right? Creating opportunities for yourself is one thing. Finishing the play and really uh, jumping on those opportunities and scoring the point is another. We were pulling off half of that and we weren't closing. The opportunities were everywhere, but we weren't taking advantage and finishing the rally. So. Give it off to um, to Chacon and uh, Fitzpatrick. Really strong team, and I expect them to battle back. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you.